um, Marlo Trite is an old friend of the family. He was one of Robert's dearest friends. I remember him, I think, looking at a motorcycle under the arbor or something. But it was many years ago, and you've been a long time family friend. <laughs> well, I feel honored just to be allowed to be here. Uh, I only knew Dr. Swain for a little over 53 years and uh, was introduced to him through his son, who went to the same high school I did, and we took the uh, sort of the same path for a while uh, in the car motorcycle uh, arena. And Dr. Swain was someone who never, ever chastised us for what we did. Maybe we had to fix the damage, <laughs> but we weren't chastised for trying things. Bob was a lifelong friend of mine. We both were drafted almost within months of each other. And prior to that, we had commandeered the family garage. My parents didn't have a garage that we could commandeer, but for some reason or another, Dr. Swank allowed us to have the family garage. So we were car guys. Sometimes we clear up to $50 for one. <laughs> But what he didn't understand was that Dr. Smyth was a car person who appreciated the finer things in cars. We built cars that were fun cars for us. Dr. Smyth had to park his car, the family car, any other car in the driveway. And he had some of the nicest cars that you could ever imagine. And Bob and I never bothered to look at them. We never bothered to wash them. We never bothered to help with them. We worked on our crap in the family <laughs> world. <laughs> he had new Jags, new Mercedes 190 convertibles, Jensen Interceptors, Chrysler, the three color Chrysler cars that came out in the 50s, the pink, black, and, and white ones. Dodge D500 V8, everything. We didn't notice those cars because Bob had a 37 Plymouth and <laughs> I had one of Bob's Castaway cars, which I think was a 46 Ford. And we just worked on them in his garage and he never ever said, don't do this, don't do that. We had to string a cord out from the kitchen or the either the kitchen or the laundry room to run the welder. And that never seemed to bother anybody. We didn't like the place on fire. And as long as that was okay, things went well. Dr. Smyth loved music. He introduced, I think, Bob naturally first and me secondly to modern jazz. And uh, it's the only music that I've ever liked all my life. And I have to thank him for that introduction. Bob used to get a whole row in the front balcony of the uh, auditorium downtown when Jazz at the Phil came to town. He bought 20 seats in the front row. And 20 of our friends all got to hear Ella Fitzgerald and all of the greats of, of the jazz community. And I don't think the doctor's mind got to go. <laughs> Bob handled the tickets. <laughs> summer, summer was best at the swimming house because there was a swimming pool, there was an outdoor fireplace, and we were allowed privileges that we shouldn't have been allowed. But nobody ever said no, nobody ever said that's stupid. We were allowed to experiment with things. Bob was big into explosives pool. And it was always Oh, brilliant at, at uh, conning other people into his game. One night a week was sacred. About 7 o'clock, I think, on a Tuesday. 
everybody converged. The garage door went right into the TV room. And the family sat around. We all smoked. So the smoke filled in, except for Dr. Swank, who was smart enough not to. And we watched. Had gun go travel and married. After that, the TV was off. We went back to the garage. <laughs> Dr. Swain was an innovator, uh, an educator, and probably the reason that I'm standing here today is because when I had a heart surgery, it was a fine air filter, probably. Thank you.